4G, 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 it's all the rage, but depending on what your personal definition of 4G is, there's probably at least one carrier out there that disagrees with you. What's going on guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. Whether you think LTE, WiMAX, HSPA+, all of the above, none of the above, are 4G. Whenever we get two 4G devices in the phone dog labs, well, we do a dog fight to see which one is the best. One of those is a T-Mobile MyTouch 4G slide made by HTC, available at T-Mobile now for $199.99. Now the benefit here, not only does it have a physical QWERTY keyboard, and not only is it an upgrade from the MyTouch 4G or 3G slide rather, but it has a dual core 1.2 gigahertz processor, Android 2.3, an 8 megapixel camera, which T-Mobile basically says is the best camera that any smartphone has ever had. And that goes up against the Samsung Droid Charge on Verizon, one of Verizon's flagship 4G LTE devices. And as you know, their network has received quite a bit of praise in the LTE department for fast fast speed. So which one's the best? Is it the T-Mobile MyTouch 4G slide with the physical QWERTY keyboard or is it the Samsung Droid Charge with all of its slabby goodness, Android 2.2 and Verizon 4G LTE connectivity? We'll find out in the dogfight, but first special thanks to our buds at Best Buy because when you walk into Best Buy Mobile, you don't have to deal with mail-in rebates. You walk out with either of these devices without messing with paperwork, waiting 8 to 10 weeks. That's pretty cool. And let me tell you, they give us a bunch of phones in our one-paw bandit game. So, you know, all those phones that you win in our contests, those are provided by Best Buy Mobile. But enough of that, let's get into it. Which one's the best? My Touch 4G Slide? Droid Charge. Let's find out in the dogfight, which starts right now. So, you know, we hear 4G all of the time. You see Verizon has 4G LTE, Sprint has WiMAX, T-Mobile has HSPA+, AT&T kind of has HSPA+, and is moving to LTE. So, you know, a lot of stuff going on in the 4G spectrum, but the customers, 4G is 4G, everybody has 4G, uh, according to what advertisements portray. So it's interesting to look at the different 4G devices. Here we have the T-Mobile MyTouch 4G slide. It's the newest version of the MyTouch family, and it's available now for $199.99 after mail-in rebate with a two-year agreement. And then you have the Samsung Droid Charge over here. Now this is arguably Verizon's flagship 4G LTE device at the moment. It's available for $299.99, uh, at Verizon, actually they may have dropped the price to $249. I think I saw a special for it, but it's still usually $299.99. So it's up there in that pretty expensive price tier. A little bit more expensive than the Thunderbolt and the LG Revolution, but it offers a Super AMOLED Plus display and a couple of other features that make it you know, a little bit more on the higher end spectrum than the uh, Thunderbolt and the Revolution, not to say that both of those aren't decent devices. But you have the MyTouch 4G slide over here, 1.2 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon processor over here. So you have a dual core processor here. You have a 3.7 inch display. So the display is a little bit on the smaller side. I know the natural progression is everybody says where and the iPhone 4 has a 3.5 inch display. You're correct. But you know, you look at the Android world, 3.7 to 4.5, you know, is really where it's at in the Android world with that nice sweet spot between, you know, about four inches. So I know a lot of people like the you know bigger displays, four inches, four point three inches. It's kind of become the norm. So the interesting thing with this is how well is it going to sell? But anyway, 3.7 inch super LCD display over here. You have an 8 megapixel camera on the back, which T-Mobile and HTC are calling the most advanced camera on any smartphone. So you have that, of course, with autofocus, dual LED flash. You have a front-facing camera up here. And you know, design-wise, it's very similar to the MyTouch 4G. Now, where this is an evolutionary bump from the 3G slide is not only the dual-core processor and the specs, but also, of course, it has a physical QWERTY keyboard. It's a four-row uh, four QWERTY keyboard, dedicated row for the space bar, for commonly used symbols, and then other stuff like the Genius button, Menu, Home, all the typical buttons that you see here on the front. So you have some physical buttons up here, Home, Menu, Back, and the Genius button, which we'll cover a little bit later, and then an optical trackpad down here. But like I said, design-wise, very similar to the MyTouch 4G. So you can see it's at the rounded edges with Chrome, and over here, Volume Rocker, micro USB charging port on this side, physical camera button if I don't drop the phone, which you know I love those physical camera buttons. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up here at the top with a power button. And then all in all, you know, even with the physical QWERTY keyboard, I'm amazed at how thin and light this device is and also how sturdy the hinge is. There's a little bit of, uh, it's not as, I'd say, hard to press as the Droid 3, something like that where you really have to actively slide it up from beginning to end. But over here, you know, you press it and it kind of pops, auto pops into place. There's still some movement required but it's a little bit more animated than the Droid 3. You can see T-Mobile on the back there. So all in all, this is a really nice device. The keyboard, I'll be honest with you, is kind of a spoiler, isn't my favorite uh, in the industry. I think the Droid, the Droid 3 is definitely the best right now, followed by something like the Epic and the Evo Shift 
and a couple of those. So not the best keyboard, but still it's nice to have the physical option. Then over here you have the Samsung Droid Charge, one gigahertz Hummingbird processor. So single core Hummingbird, a little bit slower. And also there's a concern about running out of memory on this. If I recall, it has 384 megabytes of memory. So you'll notice you know, some slowdowns from time to time in the Droid Charge. Not really as much when you're doing everyday tasks. You know, you're scrolling through home screens, things like that. But if you opened up a lot of programs at once or you know, relatively quickly right behind each other, you'll notice a little bit of a slowdown, at least I have. So Android 2.2 over here with Samsung's TouchWiz user interface is running TouchWiz 3.0, whereas over here you have Android 2.3. It's the latest version that's really available right now, Gingerbread, with HTC Sense 3.0. Now this is what's called an Espresso build of HTC Sense 3.0. Espresso is designed specifically for the MyTouch line. And you'll see some differences when you look at this versus something like the Evo 3D. You'll see some differences in the way the lock screen looks. I and mean, this is an, obviously a dogfight between these two, but you can see here, both of these are running Sense 3.0, but this is running the MyTouch version. You don't get the shortcuts. And then you'll notice here in the personalization menu, you don't get all of the same stuff down there. So the ability to change the lock screen comes with some of the higher end HTC devices like the Evo 3D, the Sensation 4G, but this is still an awesome contender on T-Mobile. It goes right up there with the LG G2X and with the, uh, you know, they're calling it the T-Mobile G2X and the uh, HTC Sensation 4G. So it's right up there. We just bumped this up and Phone Dog's top smartphones list to number three on T-Mobile. So it's definitely a good phone. This is as well though, but you know, the continue along eight megapixel camera on the back with a flash and then you have your front facing camera over there. So a little behind in the Android software front, it's not running uh, TouchWiz 4.0 like uh, the Galaxy S2 is, but still 3.0 pretty decent. And you know, for those that are switching from iPhone or you know, from an iOS device, be it an iPod Touch, something you've used in the past, you're going to see a lot of similarities here in the way the interface looks. First of all, it scrolls from left to right. Also, you'll see these kind of colorful boxes around the applications. Now, there's a lot of bloatware that comes pre-installed on this device. You have Amazon Kindle, Vcast apps, Backup Assistant, BitBot, Blockbuster, City ID. We'll scroll through here and see Guided Tours, IM, Mobile Hotspot, Samsung's Media Hub, My Verizon Mobile, Rhapsody, Rock Band, Slacker, TuneWiki, Vcast Media, VZ Navigator, and of course, visual voicemail. So you get quite a bit pre-installed on this and you can't take any of that off. So in a you know, phone that's an awesome device like this, it's high end, but it's a little limited on the memory front, you kind of want to be able to take off as much as possible, but you can't on this device. Now you'll notice down here as well, a little bit of a difference here on Sense 3.0 versus the 3.0 on the Evo and on the Sensation. The applications draw a little bit different. You have three shortcuts down here, messages, internet, and contacts, which you can move those in and out if you want to. And then you have the call button down here and the menu button over here to the right. Now I know a lot of people kind of get frustrated with the way this looks with the shortcuts down here. They like kind of the way the stock Android look is with you know the button down there in the center and that's all that's down there. Maybe a shortcut or two on the sides but button right in the center. Not the case over here. Applications drawer on both of these can be found on the right side. Now in this one you get Bejeweled 2 in terms of uh, bloatware friend stream which is an HTC thing. That's not really bloatware but T-Mobile's highlight, Kid Zone, Netflix, My Account, My Device, Polaris Office, Setup, T-Mobile Mall, T-Mobile TV, Telenav, which is, you know, they're obviously your, uh, your GPS stuff, video chat, Wi-Fi calling, Wi-Fi hotspot, and Zinio Reader. So not only is this a Wi-Fi calling device where you can jump on the Wi-Fi network at home, if you're in an area with T-Mobile, spotty T-Mobile service, jump right on Wi-Fi. This is one of the smartest things I think T-Mobile does. I wish all the carriers did that, where when you're in a rough spot and you're in a home or something with Wi-Fi, but a rough uh, in terms of reception, you can jump on Wi-Fi. But then you have the hotspot as well. And you'll see some changes just to compare notification bars between the two. You know, for to both of these to be running Android, it's pretty impressive to look at all of the differences, even though this one's running 2.3 and this one's running 2.2. You can see over here, you have your recent applications. So much like since 3.0 that we've seen in the past, you have the ability to slide through and see your most recent applications. But this is a nice little perk that comes with uh, 3.0, the quick settings tab down here, which gives you the, the ability to pop over, turn on Wi-Fi, turn on Wi-Fi hotspot, Bluetooth, GPS, you can do all of that without actually going into the settings menu, which is very nice. And then along with Sense 3.0, HTC's bundled their own task manager. So I can go in here, I can see what's running, I can kill it all and refresh it safely without downloading a third party application like Advanced Task Killer, something like that. So that's a big pro for a lot of people that think that uh, task killers, you know, the big industry battle right now is whether task killers uh, cause issues or whether they improve the overall performance. And that's definitely a hot debate. Uh, going on right now. Well, with this, and this one has it as well, you'll notice the, uh, sorry about that, you notice the Droid Charge has it as well. There's a built-in Samsung task manager 
which you can jump into and kill all the stuff there. So let's go into text messaging. You can see we'll pop into messaging on both of these devices and take a look. Now obviously you have a lot more screen real estate over here. So when it comes to virtual keyboard, the, uh, the Droid Charge is going to be the one that wins, which you can see kind of the new interface over here. You have this tab here where you can move between groups and attachments. And then over here I can open it up and you can see I have HTC's Sense keyboard, but then I also have Swipe pre-installed as well. So if Swipe's your thing, that's there as well. So I can say the Quick Brown Fox. Fox wants some water. And so you can see 3.7 inch display makes it kind of hard to type, but that's at the point for me where it's a little bit too small. But again, you know, different strokes uh, for different people. So different, uh, Quick Brown Fox wants some water. And then you can see in landscape, of course, I can turn it over and use that keyboard and it offers a little bit more real estate. Now where the perk comes in, the physical keyboard is here as well. So I can say the Quick Brown Fox, mm, blah, blah. Quick Brown Fox, blah, blah, blah. And you know, the thing I don't like about the keyboard, it's not the keys are spaced well, they're large enough, but there's just not enough tactile feedback. They're very kind of sticky, almost like they don't want to work. And I'm hoping that with use, you know, with a couple of months of use, that'll go away, or perhaps it's just this unit. I mean, obviously that manufacturing stuff varies from device to device, but that could be frustrating for people that are used to a better keyboard, like a BlackBerry keyboard, and there are better ones even on the market right now, not only between the BlackBerry devices, but the Droid 3's keyboard is far, far better than the MyTouch 4G slide. So if you're looking for one you know, with a great keyboard, check that one out. But uh, you know, if the keyboard is not your only thing, this is definitely an awesome device. It just does not do particularly well in the keyboard department, the physical keyboard department, that is. You can see over here a couple of different options come out of the box, Samsung keypad and swipe, so you get that as well. And then just to show you what it looks like in landscape mode with a 4.3 inch display, pretty easy to type on. There's quite a bit of screen real estate. And I can see here, Quick Brown Fox is happy. It's pretty quick and easy to type on there. Samsung's keypad has improved. It's still not my favorite, but it's on there and available for your use. And of course you can download some of the third party keyboards through the market, gingerbread keyboard, Swift key, things like that. You can download for free or for a small fee in the Android market. So keyboard front, definitely goes to the Samsung Droid Charge. The fact that this one has a physical keyboard, it wins an award there just for having it, but it's not the best physical QWERTY on the market by any means.